guess you could say that I'm pretty desperate coming to a woman's man for advice. My life's falling apart. I can't hold my job. My girlfriend's going to leave me. I'm struggling with alcoholism. I can't pay off my debt. Right now I'm about to lose everything because I can't be a man. I need to do, I need to step up and grow up to be a man, like everyone says. But I don't know how to. I give you the money, now answer my question. How do I be a man? What's your name, boy? Reader. John Reader. Come on, boy, you call that a handshake? Reave it hard and shake it like a man. That's my first lesson to you. Listen, part of being in the advice business is to know when there are people better at you than giving advice in certain aspects. I would not be doing my job if I didn't tell you who to go to instead. What do you mean? I mean that you should go look for a man named Huckleberry Finn. At this time of day, he'd probably be hunting or fishing. He doesn't really stay in one place too long, but if I were to wager where you could find him right now, I'd say he's at the park bench around the corner. He's getting old, but I know for sure he was born to do what defines a man. There's no man on this side of the Mississippi who can give you better advice than Huckleberry Finn. All right. to me if you was drowned in that there swimming pool. There ain't no excuse for waking a resting old man like yours truly. Well, now that you've gone and woke me, there ain't no cause in telling you to scram. Sit down. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, for a couple of fish hooks, I'll learn you about being a man. Everything I know, honest to goodness. All right, I'll, I promise to get you your fish hooks later. Oh. All right, you got yourself a deal. Okay, deal. Uh, can you let go of my hand, sir? All right. Now hold on. Let me let it come back to me. One time, when I was a young boy, I had I had this one friend. It was Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer, just saying, I didn't see no diamonds. Well, it don't matter whether or not you saw them. They were there, and there were loads of them. There was Arabs there, too, and elephants, and all kinds of other things. Well, then why couldn't we see him then? Well, if you weren't so ignorant and read a book called Don Quixote, then you would know without asking. It was all the by enchantment. And there were hundreds of soldiers there, and elephants, and treasure, and so on. But there were enemies there too. And there was magicians, and they told to turn the whole thing into an infant Sunday school just as spy. Well, all right then. The thing for us to do is to go after the magicians. Huckleberry Finn, you numbskull! Why, a magician could call up a lot of genies, and they would have you up like nothing before you could say Jack Robinson. They're tall as trees and big as a church. Well, suppose we got some genies to help us. Can't we then kick the other crowd? How you going to get them? How'd they get them? Why, they rub an old tin lamp. Or an ring, and then the genies come tearing in, and the thunder and lightning are rolling, and around smoke and everything. And they're told to do something, and they have to do it. And they don't think of nothing of pulling a shot up to the river roots and belting of an old Sunday school, but they'd belt the teacher over the head of it, or any other man for that matter. Well, who makes them tear around so? <sighs> Why, whoever rubs the lamp or ring, they belong to whoever. Whatever he says, build a palace 40 miles long out of diamonds, and fill it with chewing gum. Or whatever you do, want to do, fetch an emperor's daughter from China and make her marry her. They gotta do it before the sun up the next day. And more, they've gotta waltz that palace around, and over the country, wherever you wanna do. They just gotta do whatever you want to do. And say. Well, I think they're a, a pack of flatheads for not keeping the palace in themselves instead of fouling them away like that. And what's more, if I was one of them, I'd see a man in Jericho, for I would drop my business and come to him for a rubbing of an old tin lamp. 
Buddy, you'd come if you had wanted to or not, if you rubbed that thing. What? Not as high as a tree and as big as a church? All right, then. I would come, but I'd lay I'd make a man climb the highest tree there was in the entire country. I know we used to talk to you, Huck Finn. You don't seem to know anything somehow. Perfect sap head. Ah, this was a good old days. Now, I thought all this over for two or three days and reckoned I would see if there was anything in it. So I got an old tin lamp and an iron ring and went out in the woods and rubbed and rubbed till I sweat and so I sweat like an oxen, calculating to build up a palace and sell it. But it weren't no use. No, the genius come. So then I judged that the stuff that was only just another one of Tom Sawyer's lies. Hey! Oh! I'm here telling you what you need to know about being a man, and you're dozing off as though I'm telling you a lullaby. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I just don't understand how uh, that has anything to do with being a man. Oh, hey, stand up. Get up. You'll you listen here. I'll tell you what all that were about in just a second. But first, you gotta keep your head on straight. You got that, boy? Yes, sir, Mr. Finn. Very good. Now, this one time, I was talking to a lady named Miss Watson. She told me to pray every day. And then whatever I asked for, I would get it. But it weren't so simple. I tried, and one, once I pray every day, and one time I got a fish line, but no hooks. It weren't no good to me without hooks, boy. I tried for hooks three or four times, but somehow it couldn't make it work. You catching on, boy? Uh, yes, sir. But how does that relate to um, being a man? That's not always going to be as easy as make pretend Sunday school magicians and Tim Lamp genies. Gold and Arabs and swashbuckle? No. People lie. And prayers ain't always answered as a yes. Tom Sawyer was one of my closest friends and he most always lied. They had a saying. They said, you know how Tom Sawyer's lying? His mouth's open. People lie, boy. It's a part of nature. You gotta learn from the lies that you're being told. You also gotta be prepared when your prayers are declined. This is, these are minor yet basic aspects to being a man. Pay attention. Because we're only just getting started. Yes, Mr. Fuck. And call me Huck. Mr. Finn's my pap. Speaking of my pap. You see, my pop was a drunken villain. He hadn't been seen for more than a year, and that was comfortable for me. I didn't want to see him no more. He always used to wail on me when he was sober and could get his hands on me. Though, you see, though I used to take to the woods most of the time when he was around. People said that he had drowned, but I weren't so comfortable. One day he come back. He got to hang around the widows too much. She told him at last that if he didn't quit using around there, she would make trouble for him. Well, wasn't he mad? He said, I'll show Huck Finn who's boss. Huh? 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 Ah! Where am I? Upriver. About three miles on the Illinois shore, in a place where the timber is so thick you can't find it if you knew where it was. Oh, they'll know I'm gone. They'll send someone. Uh, the widow, she'll send. Uh... She already found out where you were, and she sent a man over to try and get a hold of you. But I drove him off with a gun. Now I'm heading out. If you think about leaving here, I'll find you and I'll make you wish you could die. I was in a heap of trouble. My pap locked me in the cabin and left to go get blind drunk. I tried to find some way out, but eventually I just went to sleep. I don't know how long I slept, but I sure woke up in a hurry. Uh, these darn black people, these snakes, and these devil children! Uh, See no snakes? Get him off me! Get him off me! Get him off my face! Tramp! Tramp! That's a dead tramp! 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 They're coming after me! But I won't go! Oh, let me alone! Let me alone! Let a poor devil alone! Get up! Huh? What you about? What you doing with?
with that gun? So, someone came in here, and I was laying for him. Why didn't you roast me? I tried, but I couldn't. Well, all right. Don't sit there palavering all day. Out with you. See if there's a fish. I'll be down in a minute. Follow up. That sounds, your dad sounds like a real jerk. Yep, real piece of work. Turns out he was actually a woman. What? Explains most of his problems. Now, before I continue, I gotta ask you. What's your name, son? John Reader. John Reader. Let me tell you something, John Reader. Names have power. Don't let yours lose power. The name Huckleberry Finn didn't have very much power when I was a boy. Some people know me by Mary Williams, George Peters, George Jackson, Dolphus, and even Tom Sawyer. Those are different stories from different times. Right now, I need to know why you need to know how to be a man. Come on. <clears throat> well, got into some really tough situations that I can't get myself out of. And just end up losing things. You see, my first job, I was a I was working at Wendy's, I was a fry cook. The first week I burned about pretty much everything. And I realized that I sucked at that job, so I quit. Wait, wait. You wasn't fired? You quit? Yes, sir. I did quit. You decided to up and quit. All right, let me finish my story, then maybe you'll see what you done wrong. There I was, walking up and down the river, keeping an eye out for any fish on the lines. Well, all at once, here comes a canoe. Just a beauty, too, about 13 or 14 foot long, riding high like a duck. I shot off head first at the bank like a frog, clothes on and all, and struck out for the canoe. I just expected there'd be somebody laying down in it, because people have often done that, just to fool folks. When a chap had pulled a skiff out most to it, they'd raise up and laugh at him. But warrant so this time, it was a drift canoe sure enough, and I clumb in and I pulled her to shore. Well, the old man will be glad to see this. She's worth ten dollars. But when I got to shore, Pap wasn't in sight yet, and I was running her into a little creek like a gully, all hung over with vines and willows. I struck another idea. I judged I'd hide her good, and then instead of taking her up to the woods when I run off, I'd go down the river about 50 miles and camp in one, good, one place for good and not have such a rough time tramping on foot. So I waited for him to take his raft up to town, and I got me some supplies, beat down the door, splattered some pig's blood, and as to look like a murder. And I took the canoe up as far as Jackson Island before going to shore. Why, it's Jim. Holding this Watson slave. Hello, Jim. <gasps> Don't hurt me. No, I ain't never, I ain't never heard no ghosts. You, you, you get back in the river where you belong. And remember, old Jim's always been your friend. Why, Jim, it's only me, Huck, not a ghost. Just as live as you are. Oh, lordy, Master Huck. I thought you was a goner. But ain't you afraid that I'll tell where you is? Nah. I ain't scared. It's good daylight. Let's make some breakfast. Make up a campfire good. What's the point in making up their campfire to cook strawberries? You got a gun, ain't you? We can get something good to eat. Strawberries is such a truck. Is that all you lived on? I couldn't get nothing else. Well, how long you been on the island? I came here... The day you was killed. And ain't you had nothing but that rubbish to eat? No, sir. I, I couldn't get nothing else. Well, you must be starved then. I reckon I could eat a horse. I reckon I could. Say, how, how long you's been on the island? Well, since the night I was killed. No way! What has you lived on? But you got a gun. Oh, yes, you got a gun. That's good. Now you kill something and I'll make up the fire. So I went off and got us some good eating. We talked, and I told him the whole situation. He tells me that he was run away with, from Miss Watson. She was going to sell him down to New Orleans. So I decided we was going to run together and be free. You got away, and then you're going to help Jim escape. Wow, you really are brave. I could never have done something like that. It ain't just bravery, John. It's the will to carry on and never give up. Listen here. A real man never quits, and that's what I learned. Even though Jim was a runaway slave, I weren't going to give up on him, not for the whole world. Wow, 
I should have not quit my job so early. Probably could have done something better. Oh, quit your whining. There's a reason you came to me for help. What are the troubles do you got? Well, I have a girlfriend, but I don't think it's going to work out. Do you want it to work out? Yes, I do, but... No buts. Me and Jim was thick as thieves. That didn't mean we didn't have quarrels, though. This one time we was caught in a real thick fog and we was separated real bad. So I find poor Jim safe and sound and sleeping all peaceful out. So I decided to play an awful mean trick on poor Jim. Hello, Jim. Is that sleeping? Why didn't you stir me? Goodness gracious. Is that you, Huck? And you ain't dead? You ain't drowning? You's back again? It's too good for true, honey. It's too good for true. <laughs> Let me look at you, child. Let me feel o you. No, you ain't dead. You was back again. Live, live, and sound. Thanks to goodness. What's the matter with you, Jim? You been drinking? Drinking? Has I been a drinking? <laughs> Has I had a chance to be a drinking? Well, then what makes it talk so wild? How does that talk wild? How? Well, ain't you been talking about me uh, come back and be missing and stuff? Huck Finn, you look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. Now, ain't you been away? Been gone? Well, what nations do you mean? Where was I going? I ain't gone nowheres. Where would I go to? Well, looky here, boss. There's something wrong there is. Is I me? Or who is I? Is I here? What is I? Now that, that's what I wants to know. Well, I, you're here well enough, but I think you're a tangle-headed old fool, Jim. I is, is I? Well, you answer me this. Didn't you tow out the line in the canoe to, for, to make fast to the towhead? No. Towhead? What, what towhead? I ain't seen no towhead. You ain't seen no towhead? Looky here. Didn't the line pull loose and the raft go a-humming down the river? And leave you in the behind in the fog? No, what fog? Why the fog? The fog that's been around all night. And didn't you whoop and didn't I whoop till we got mixed up in the islands and one of us got lost and to the other and one just as as good as lost. In case he didn't know what he was and did not bust up again a lot, or them islands, and have have a terrible time, and must get drowned. Now ain't that so, boss? Ain't it so? You answer me that. Well, this is too many for me, Jim. I hadn't seen no fog, nor no islands, nor no troubles, nor no nothing. I've been sitting here taking talking with you all night till you went to sleep about ten minutes ago. And I reckon I done the same. Uh, you couldn't have got drunk in that time, so of course you've been dreaming. Dad, fetch it! How am I supposed to dream all that in ten minutes? Well, hang it all. You did dream it, because didn't any of it happen. But, Huck, it's just as plain to me as... Oh, well, don't make no difference how plain it is. Then ain't none of it happened. And that's all there is to it. When I got all wore out with work, and when the calling for you and went to sleep, my heart was most broke because you was lost and I didn't care no more what become of me in the raft. And when I wake up and find you back again all safe and sound, the tears come and I could could have got down on my knees and kiss your foot. I was so thankful. And all you was thinking about was how you could make a fool of old Jim with a lie. That truck does trash. And, and trash is what people is that puts dirt on the head or the friends and makes them ashamed. He said nothing more. That was enough. It made me feel so mean I could almost kiss his foot to get him to take it back. It was 15 minutes before I could work myself up to go and humble myself to the slave. But I'd done it. And I weren't ever sorry for it afterwards, neither. I didn't do him no more mean tricks, and I wouldn't have done that if I'd known it would make him feel that way. Oh, man. Well, that's a...
touching story of Mr. Finn. I guess in relationships are important than being a man. <clears throat> oh. I guess it's worth trying to keep them going. <laughs> you got it. You're catching on, boy. Come on. <sighs> Thanks, but my relation, my problems ain't over yet. My relationship, my family, it's pretty much stand, sir. Ah, oh, well, listen up. Let me tell you the story of an old man and a young man. You see, one day, me and uh, me and Jim, we was going down the river, and when all of a sudden, these two men come running out of the forest real fast and yelping like injured dogs. So, we took them aboard, and it turns out they was on the run, too. And they joined us, and we was like a big, happy family. And they told us they was royalty. The old man said he was a king, and the young man said he was a duke. And so, we, tra we treated them as such. I can't believe it. You actually believe they were royalty? Well, you see, John, it didn't take me much, it didn't take me long to make my mind that these liars weren't no kings nor dukes at all, but just loved home humbugs and frauds. But I never said nothing and never let on and just kept it to myself. You know, it's best. It's the best way. You see, that way you don't have no quarrels and don't get into no trouble. If they wanted us to call them kings and dukes, I had no objections as long as they would keep pieces in the family and weren't no use to tell Jim. So I didn't tell them. As you may, as you may got to know, uh, the best way to get along with these kind of people is to let them have their own way. This one time, I tried to get real rich. And... Well, all day, the King and Duke was hard at it, rigging up the stage and finding a nice fence and drawing a crowd. And that night, the house was jammed full of men in no time. When the place couldn't hold no more, well, the Duke, he quit tending the door and he went around the back way and come on stage. The most thrilling one that ever was, written and directed by Edmund Keen, the elder who also holds a starring role. Gentlemen, I present to you Royal. sold, but y'all don't want to be the laughing stock of this whole town. I reckon and never hear the last of the thing as long as y'all live. No. What we want is to go out of here quiet and talk this show up and sell the rest of the town. Then we'll all be in the same boat. Ain't that sensible? Yeah. Edge is right. Not a word about any sell. Go home and tell everyone to sell See the tragedy. Next day, you couldn't hear nothing around that town but how splendid that show was. House was jammed again that night. We sold this crown the same way. When me and the king and the duke got back to the raft, we all had a supper. By and by, about midnight, they made Jim and me back around and float her down the middle of the river and fetch her in and hide her about two mile below town. The third night, the house was crammed again, and they weren't newcomers this time, but the people at the show the other two nights, well, let's say they weren't super happy about getting sold. Hey, do you mind watching the door? I gotta go set up the show. Will do, sir. We're like the dickens to the raft, come on, boy! Now, John, of all things, remember this. I learned that the best way to get along with these kind of people is let them have their own way. Be the mature man and let them have their fun. Okay, I think I get it. Even if I don't get along with my family, uh, I'll just, I should just let them do their thing and avoid conflict with them. That's at least what I learned. Look at this. We're like having a little competition in here. Tom Sawyer's game winner, but I wouldn't expect any less from my old buddy. Now, setting that aside, it didn't always work out between us and the Duke, you see. I got a little too comfy with the Duke and King, and 
I was a little, I was too late when the king chose to sell poor old Jim downriver. Well, I mean, but I did what a real man would do. Well, I set aside everything. I wanted to go and save Jim. So that's the story about how I became a man. But what happened to Jim? You ever find him? I gotta stop somewhere. Leave something to the imagination. Well, let me say, if I didn't know Tom Sawyer was alive before, I sure as Sam Hill do now. Now get out of here. Go and give me some fish hooks. Thanks, Mr. Penn. Uh, oh, sorry, Puck. And I will catch you in the next life, and I'm gonna go find that old man who told me to come see you. Good handshake, boy. I mean, man. Yes, is that you? Have you seen that old homeless man who gave the advice? He's over on that side of the fence. You're sipping. Okay. Okay. Where's everyone getting these blankets? And also, second off, I'm learning how to be a man. Good strong handshake you got. Also, I never called your name. What's your name? Samuel Clements. Nice to meet you, Samuel Clements. What? Now it's my blanket. Floating by the riverside, lounging on my favorite side. My best friend is by my side, drifting down the river bank. He is too, even though our hearts are true. A twisted conscience mars me bad. We are happy anyway. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, the great Huck and Jim, going on adventures together till the end. Murders growing, cross dressing. Are things that we have seen. Jim saw witches take his hat. The birds say that it's gonna rain. Fishing here out in the sand, learning to become a man. Civilization puts us down, but we won't let it make us frown. Great Huck and Jim Going on adventures Together till the end Oh lordy lordy The great Huck and Jim Going on adventures Together till the end